For the Spirit himself giveth testimony to our spirits that we are the sons of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. There is a recent error manifesting itself in art and in pictures and also in language of making modern depictions of angels as women. Now, strictly speaking, angels do not have a gender because spiritual substances do not have a gender. Even in man, his soul does not have a gender, even though this is a common error among many today. The soul does not have a gender. The gender of man comes from his body. It's proper to his body. And angels do not have a gender because A, they don't have a body, and B, they do not reproduce. But when we make use of language in reference to them, they should be referred to and depicted in statues and paintings in the masculine. And there's several reasons for this. The first is that all language about spirits, both angels and God, is said analogically. And by that we mean that it's partly the same and partly different. So when we refer to God, the things that we say of God are somewhat the same as how we understand things, but they're also very different because God is infinite. Any attribute that he possesses is infinite. We can't think of an infinite attribute, so it's different than the way we can think about it. But when we're talking about angels, it's also analogical because their being is different than ours, even though it's somewhat the same. Angels, St. Thomas said, are always in act, both in their will and in their intellect. And what this means is, is that St. Thomas says that angels don't sleep, of course, but they don't go from potentially thinking something to actually thinking something. They're always actually thinking something. So unlike us who sleep, we're in potential to the thinking. When we wake, we can actually think, but angels always are in the act of thinking. Now, in the relationship that men have to each other, women take the position of being in potency to the man. And what we mean by that is, is that in conjugal relations, the woman is in potency to being made pregnant by the man who it can make her actually pregnant. So in point in fact, men are associated with act and women with potency. And so angels who are always in act should be depicted like men who are also act. All depictions in the Old and New Testament and in all authentic apparitions of the saints, to my knowledge, all the angels appear to be masculine, except demons who are sometimes appear as women. And they appear as women because of disordered reasons, but it's part of it also is because the demons want to appear in a way that's not true to their form, precisely because they hate order. Angels being pure spirits are like God in this regard. And since we refer to God in the masculine terms, we refer to angels in masculine terms who are in God's image. In the Old Testament, when it said we made man in God's image, he means principally by that, St. Thomas tells us, that man is in God's image because he has intellect and will. Well, the angels have intellect and will, and so angels are in God's image. As a result, since angels don't have gender, therefore it's more appropriate to depict them in the masculine gender, since that's most appropriate in relationship to God. We refer to and depict angels in the masculine gender because they are powerful like the masculine gender in humans are generally stronger than the female gender. Now obviously, whenever you say things like this, they can always show you some 500 pound woman that can bench press 300 pounds. And you're like, well, look at this, is, this, she's precisely proves the point. She's the exception and not the rule. Men, because of the material dispositions of their bodies, tend to be physiologically stronger than women. But angels are very powerful. Their wills are so powerful that if God so chose, they could actually lay waste to an entire planet. In fact, in the medieval period, the scholastics were of the belief that it was actually the angels who moved the planets in their orbits. Recognizing, now we may not think that necessary today because we have a better understanding of the physical laws, but the angels could still be doing that. We don't know for certain even though it's probably more the case because of the principle of economy to actually think that it's more based on physical laws. But the fact of the matter is, is that it's a recognition on the side of the scholastics that the angels have powerful wills and therefore they should be put in the image of men. 
angels are like fathers to us insofar as they counsel us by guiding us and they do this by introducing things into our imagination angels work a little bit differently of course than men but men generally speaking operate more according to the order of reason and women according to the order of emotions now you've heard me say this before that this is actually a perfection in women because the necessity to direct the emotional life of the children requires her easy, easy ability to empathize with the child, which means that women are more ordered towards thinking things emotionally. This isn't bad, this is a perfection, as long as it's properly ordered and moderated. Whereas men are more ordered towards abstract considerations. And this is partly ordered because of the fact that men are, men are ordered towards working, which means you have to put your self-interests and your emotions aside, and also in the case of battle, you have to put your self-interests aside and to focus on what you're doing. Angels are like fathers because they protect us. That is, they go to battle for us. It's not appropriate that women are in battle. Now, there's, there's several reasons of this, but the principal reason is psychologically. They know from modern studies, of course, we, they normally would be able to tell these things just from common experience, but today we're not too bright, so we need formal studies to tell us what past generations already knew. But the fact of the matter is, is that men tend to focus on something very concentratedly. They can look at something and they tune everything else out. Women, on the other hand, can listen to a number of different things, but only superficially. In other words, they, it's harder for them to concentrate on things. This gentleman I know who went to the Iraq war, said that when the women got into battle, they couldn't, they couldn't tune out all of the bombs dropping, the bullets flying, and all the noise and racket that was going on, and so it was, it was almost impossible for them to engage in war, whereas the guys can completely tune all that out. Now, women know this because they come up and try and talk to their husband, he just keeps pressing the button on the remote, watching TV, and he doesn't even know she's there. So, what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is that men are more ordered towards focusing and more towards intellectual operations. And so they can engage in battle because they can concentrate on it singly. Now, because that means that women don't belong in battle, not only because of the fact that they have a hard time by focusing on a single thing for a long period of time while tuning everything else out, again, we're talking in generalities, but also because they're not as strong. And so angels who fight our spiritual war for us with a demon should be, picted, to be depicted as valiant male warriors, not as women. They provide for us like fathers who work, insofar as angels provide for us spiritually by constantly interceding before God. Just as fathers are the head of the house, so too we ought to depend on our guardian angels as our head, so that we may be directed and guided. Men operate again more according to the order of reason. And therefore, angels who have only an intellect and will are more like men insofar as they all operate according to the intellect. Men operate more according to the intellect, even though I concede men can be very irrational. The fact of the matter is, though, is that as a general disposition arising from the disposition of the body, a male body, he's more ordered towards intellectual operations. And angels who have an intellect and a will and no emotions, it's therefore more appropriate that we depict our angels and refer to them in the masculine. Therefore, we should be careful to always buy pictures and statues of angels and refer to them in the masculine. This is not a matter of denigrating women, since feminine nature, feminine nature has its perfections. But the perfections of an angel are more like that of a man's than that of a woman's. And it is a in a time when the roles of women, men and women have collapsed, both in the family and in society. It's then, it's at this moment, that we start depicting angels as women. And we should also buy these things as a matter of devotion for all of the reasons which I mentioned. Omnis Santi Angeli et Archangeli Ora Pronobis. All ye holy angels and archangels, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost.